Good morning. I wanted to talk to you this morning a little bit about love. And then we're going to look in love in a different aspect uh, this morning. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 43, and we'll go down to 46. So just a few verses. So 43, it starts off with this. Ye have heard that it has been said that thou shalt love thy neighbors and hate thine enemy. So you love your neighbor and you hate your enemy. So you love those that are close to you and you hate those that you, you see as an enemy. Those that, that I don't, that you're not close to, those that uh, may even hate you uh, to some degree. Um, so, but, this is another but, so, but, this is the opposite of what it says as far as loving your neighbor and hating your enemy. So this says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. And so, how do you love your enemies? Well, it goes on, it says, Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So that's how you are supposed to love. So it says, Love your enemies. Well, how can I? And then it says, Bless them that curse you. Uh, so you don't retaliate with cursing. Now, you know, if they curse you and, they, you know, they say evil things about it, you don't, you're not going to retaliate with them. You, you're supposed to bless them. Uh, so you don't speak evil. So do good to them that hate you. I think one of the biggest things, I think, well, it is not a thing. It, the, one of the worst things that somebody does if they don't hate you or if they hate you, they try to get a rise off of you. And if you do not give them the satisfaction of that rise and you instead share with them some kind of love and humility and grace and forgiveness, um, that's actually worse off uh, because they're not getting that rise that they want. So it says to do good to them that hate you. And then it says and pray for them which despitefully use you. So in this case, you just pray for them. Uh, you don't really need to go out of your way to you know, correct them of their wrongdoing. You don't necessarily need to drown them in blessings. This is saying that you can just pray for them. Like when someone treats you bad, just pray for them. Um, just go, Lord, you know, help them with their heart, help them with their attitude, help them with... Usually when people outwardly are evil or mean to people, it is something that they themselves dealing with uh, some kind of emotional and they're just using you as a punching bag in a sense so pray for them because uh, God's the only one that can change your heart you can spend years <laughs> trying to help somebody and you, you deal with your own nerves and deal with everything and it's just like running on a treadmill sure you get your exercise but you're just running in place and that's usually how it is when you deal with people so pray for them. Allow God to intercede for you and to help them. So pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So the, the ones that it says, and this is twofold, so they, they despitefully use you, they use you. Um, most people, they, they treat you as just this tool uh, that they use and then they put it away. And then they persecute you. So that's actually when they actually demoralize you and they treat you bad but so they use you and persecute you and to deal with that is pray it says it it says pray for them which so you don't need to go out of your way just pray for them I, I know that I used to run ragged trying to help people and I just pray for them it's a whole lot easier and then it goes on to 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he may get the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. So 
whether it is your neighbor, whether it is your enemy, whether it's a good person or a bad person, the sun rises and sets. Each day comes and goes. And he sendeth the rain on the just and on the unjust. God himself shows the blessings on both sides. Whether you are a follower of Jesus Christ, whether you accepted God and you, you know, right you know, you're a good Christian person and you go to church and you do all this other stuff and you read your Bible and you do all this stuff or you're a thief, murderer, adultery, um, just evil, just an evil person in general. Uh, rain comes and provides for both sides and the day the sun will come and the day will set. So God is saying, I practice what I'm telling you because I send the rain and I introduce the sun to rise on both. So, verse 46, For if we love them which love you, what reward have ye? It is easy to be rewarded if you love somebody that loves you. It, it, there's no animosity there's no persecution there's no hatred there's no nothing it's just you know kiss kiss hug hug it's just you know this mutual love mutual respect mutual anything and there is no reward system but if you manage to love somebody that hates you and your your reward system well, let's continue to read do not even the publicans the same. This is saying that you're no better off than they are. That's what it's saying. If you only need reward from them, don't even the publicans or don't even the unbelievers. Don't even somebody that doesn't even know God, doesn't even respond to God, doesn't even acknowledge God, doesn't, he's not a follower of Christ at all. Don't even them. So you're saying that you're not better off than an unchristian or unbeliever. And then in verse 47, we'll end here. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the others? Do even the publicans also? That's the tax collectors. These are the ones that, that were hated pretty much of everybody because of money. They dealt with money and they took money for people. Many people only salute people that are like, you know, kind, sweet, their neighbors. What reward do you have in that? You know, the, the greatest gift that Jesus did is found in Romans 5.8. And it says, um, For God commendeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us so much that he was willing to give his life for us. And I guess if we want to reflect on it, do we even do that to people that maybe use us, abuse us? Um, you say, well, I'm not going to go out of my way for somebody that persecutes me, that treats me awful, and that cusses me and demoralizes me. Do you pray for them? Do you even go that far with them? What reward do you ultimately get by saluting only your brethren? So reflection, how do you love? Do you love only those that love you? How do you treat people that are mean and demoralizing and persecuting you? How do you compare with Christ and what he did for us on the cross? How would you be if he didn't love you enough to die for you? Just some things to reflect on this morning. So my prayer for you, I always try to end with this. My prayer for you is that you would show some love for people that don't love you. At the very least, just pray for them. Intercede and say, you know, the Lord just changes their heart. And if you have a difficulty, just understand what Jesus Christ did and read Romans 5, 8. And understand that he died while you were still a sinner. 
while you were an enemy with him, he died for you. Do just some reflections this morning. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day.